All right, we are going to start this celebration off with food. And she has touched countless lives. Look at how full this room is and all of the ministry that this represents, all the lives that have been touched. And we would probably need our auditorium and even a larger one if we had all the lives that have been affected in a very positive way by this great lady. So let's all pray apostolic style. We pray together, giving thanks to God for this lady, for the 90 years, and for all the life she's touched, and for the food. Let's love him together. God, we love you right now. We thank you, Jesus, for Sister Cleveland. Thank you, Lord, for her health for 90 years, wonderful years, how she has poured herself into so many people and affected all of us. Thank you, God, for the blessings upon her and upon her family. Pray, God, you continue to give her health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for this food, for this meal. We're about to partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everyone, we are so happy to have you here. And uh, we thank you for honoring, uh, we call her Grandma. And uh, it's a little scary that they put a son-in-law as an MC, but I am the favored one. Uh, and we've got, the kids are gonna speak, and, uh, and so we're uh, gonna have a good time here. Uh, I can put my story in one sentence with grandma, and that is round steak, spaghetti, and tacos. I don't need to say anything else. That says it all, and thank God my wife can cook it as good as her. So, and uh, you know, maybe right now, I'll say thank you to PJ and Cherie and this church for their involvement, and Pastor Connor for allowing us to come here and be a part of this. They're in a remodel, and we're kind of messing up the remodel, I think, but uh, they I love the roses. Brother Connors is learning. <laughs> Beautiful. And uh, so we're going to start the program here. But I will ask you, uh, I have about four, eight grandkids here. So if you can keep them quiet, it'd be great. <laughs> and any age you want, I got them all. All the way to 11 or 12. And, uh, but uh, we're going to start off. I'm asking uh, Danae actually to come first. And this is a grandchild, and uh, we've asked her to start off. We're going to have a spot for other grandkids towards the end, so don't think you've been shoved to the shelf. And Danae, if you'll talk really loud so everybody can. Happy birthday, Grandma. <laughs> this is a lovely celebration for a lovely woman, and I'm so thankful that God has allowed us to have this occasion today, that he's preserved her health and uh, given us the opportunity to celebrate 90 wonderful years. And I think all of us grandkids would say we got the best grandma on earth. And I mean that. Um, 
in thinking of what to say today, I was thinking about some of the attributes that Grandma has that have affected all of us here today. So I'm going to talk about three attributes that are prominent in my mind when I think of Grandma. The first one is generous. Um, it still boggles my mind that every Christmas we get together, she has wonderful gifts for every member of the family and <laughs> non-family, that's right. And uh, a lot of times, each Christmas, there are new additions that we add to her list um, in the family, but she is amazing the way that she cares for other people, and she really is a giver, probably one of the most giving people I've ever met. And I pray that we get that spirit of generosity um, in us and experience the joy of giving like she has always had. Um, the second attribute, and I can't leave this one out, is stubborn. <laughs> I don't know, probably a lot of us in here have witnessed a Cleveland fight over the bill, or uh, it, it can get pretty intense. And um, a story that comes to my mind when I think about this attribute of her being so stubborn, a lot of times it has to do with food. If you're a grandkid, you know that grandma is very stubborn about you eating good. And... I remember we were in Roswell one year, this has been a long time ago, and I went with the young people to a youth function, and my grandma had gone with my parents and I think some other ministers and people to a restaurant. So when I got home uh, to the house after the youth event, I, I opened my mouth, I wasn't thinking grandma was around, and I said that I didn't eat anything at the youth event. And I wasn't really hungry, I just was saying it in conversation, they had pizza that was kind of cold, I wasn't really hungry, and I didn't eat anything. Well, my grandma had leftovers from the restaurant, and she said, I have leftovers, you need to eat my leftovers. And I said, I'm really tired, I'm really not, not hungry at this point, I think I'm going to go to bed. And she said, no, you're gonna, you need to eat something before you go to bed. And I said, no, grandma, I'm really not hungry, I think I'd rather just, no, you, you need to eat something. Look, look, she goes to the fridge, and she pulls it out. And I'm like, no, I really don't want it, Grandma. So I'm getting ready for bed, and she keeps bringing it up. And I was literally getting into bed, and she's at the bedside with her box of leftovers trying to feed it <laughs> into my mouth. <laughs> None of her grandkids are going to go hungry. So, uh, but that attribute of stubbornness, I feel like, kind of um, is what contributed to the last attribute I want to talk about. And that is that this woman is faithful. And um, when I look around today, I see in a lot of ways the result of a faithful woman. A lot of the people that are here today in some way have been affected by your faithfulness. And um, I think about your life, especially as a single mom. And I know it probably wasn't easy a lot of the time. And it would have been easier for you to dump your kids on somebody else. It would have been easier for you to not take them all to church. It would have been easier for you to allow other things to come into the home to entertain them and for you to take a break. Um, I know you took them to conferences and so many things, you kept them in a godly environment. And it was that faithfulness to God, that faithfulness to the house of God, that faithfulness of keeping your kids in a godly environment that is contributed to this host of people here today. And I know my life could have been much different if you hadn't been faithful. And um, life, life, I'm sure, was tough, but you were faithful, and I thank God for that. And um, we never know how our choices affect future generations, and I know that yours have affected the generations that are represented here today. And I think of that verse where God says, you were faithful in little, and now I'm going to give you much. And you were faithful and little, and now, now look around you here today. And so in closing, I just want to say that I love you very much, and I'm very thankful for you and for your life, and happy birthday. All right. We're going to sing just a couple courses. I think they're some of Grandma's favorite courses, just a couple. And uh, so join with us. We'll have about a 100-voice choir here. Daddy, if you'll sing bass. All right. Oh, how I love.
Let's do it again. Here we go. Jesus. Can somebody help me with it? No one ever cared for me. the Lord right now and thank the Lord for his goodness. God, we love you today. We praise you today, God. You are good to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 What would we do without beautiful music? That's good music. Amen. Sister Darcy Abbott is making her way and we are going to put her up first. She is the eldest of the family. And uh, I'll let you get your notes or whatever. Well, I hope I can <coughs> make it through this. All right. First of all, happy birthday to my mom, but this is not her birthday. This is a little early. Her birthday is July 18th, but this was the time that we could all be together. So we're doing it a little bit early, but we all have confidence she'll make it till then. <laughs> Since she's not even sick. <laughs> um, I'm the eldest, and um, so uh, when my mother married, she... Uh, she was not in the church. She met my dad at a square dance. And um, I think he asked her to marry him pretty quick after that. So, uh, and then I came along pretty quickly. How long was it? You got pregnant? She got pregnant at three months. <laughs> okay, after she'd been married three months, she got pregnant with me. So, um, 
about the time that I was, I think, about a year old. Is that right? She felt the weight <coughs> of my eternal soul on her. She knew that the choices that she was making were going to affect me. And so that's when she came back to God. So you see the result of it today. Now I'm going to tell you what her first memories were. Her first memories were my grandmother, her mother, and her father owned a... Um, a nightclub. My mother's first memories are in a nightclub while her mother entertained the patrons and all of that. And I did not know that for years and years and years. And one day I found it out. She just happened to mention it. And I said, why didn't you ever tell me that? I said, think of the difference my life would be if that, if you had followed that direction. So anyway, I've never known my mother but to be in the church and also to be faithful. My grandmother was a wonderful woman, but my mother is the one that learned faithfulness. Her mother was a great Christian woman, but it was under my mom that I learned faithfulness to God, and she has always been faithful. I'm going to try not to take too much time here. Um, so her life is a testimony that a backslider can pray through and live for God all your life. Mom, you're almost 90. It's been all your, almost all your life to live for God. And you're going to make it to the end. I want, I want to talk about some, a few little things in my life. I remember the first time, and probably only time, that I stole something. I was at a store, and I saw a little uh, box of chiclets. And I wanted them so bad that I took them. And um, so on the way home, I, was, I had that, those chiclets, and I thought, and I wanted to eat one so bad, but I knew if I got them out that my siblings would see them. And uh, so I, by the time I got home, I thought, I'm just going to go out in the backyard and just throw that away. Well, before I could get to that, one of my siblings did see it. Darcy has chiclets. So then my mom said, where'd you get chiclets? And... Uh, I had to confess, I probably lied at first, but I had to confess that I had stole those chiclets. So she said, well, we're going to go back to the store, and you're going to tell them that you stole these chiclets, and you're going to pay for them. So we went back to the store, and I was dreading it all the way, but I did it, and I never stole anything after that in my life. <laughs> She cured me of that, and I want to give you honor for that. I want to give you honor for that. Somehow my mother knew that um, going to youth conventions, to youth camps, to camp meetings was very important for her children. But if she was going to go, she had to go alone because my father didn't go. And um, so she did it alone with six kids. And um, I, have a, I have a memory, a very negative memory to me. Yesterday we had a blowout in our car coming up here. And I said to myself, deja vu. <laughs> because it has to do with what I'm fixing to tell you. But we were um, going to a, probably a camp meeting, and we were on the grapevine in California. And what, what went wrong with the car? I don't know what went wrong with the car, but somehow 
something happened to the car. So we were on a steep incline, and she had to hold on to the brake to keep us from going backwards on that, on that mountain. Six kids in the car, and I was, uh, at that time in life, I got sick to my stomach when we traveled. So I had thrown up all over myself. And I'm telling her, I, I'm telling her about, about what's happening to me. She said, well, take your dress off, because she can't help me, because she's got to keep her foot on the brake, or else we're going to start going down that hill. And so I took my dress off, and then a policeman started coming up <laughs> on the side. And so I tried to get it as close to that floorboard as I could get so he couldn't see me in that back seat. And that's, that's all I remember about that situation. I don't remember how it resolved itself, but I have a very vivid memory, memory of that. And yesterday when we had a blowout on the side of the road, I thought back on that, that memory of mine. We, she would take $100, and with that $100, we got cheap motels, the cheapest you could get, and we had pancakes for breakfast and hamburgers for dinner every single day because that was what was cheap. But she kept us in those meetings. And I want to give you honor for that because that's very important, I feel like, for children to be around other children that live for God and young people. Then mom came to Scottsdale when we had been there two years and uh, she was nothing but a support to us. She was a financial support. She was an example of a Christian. And it was after she came that our church started uh, growing and becoming an actual church. She was a choir member. She was a sign language interpreter. She invited many deaf, and then she would sign the services She helped in garage sales. She helped in church work days. She cooked dinners, all kinds of dinners. Um, I, she and I cooked a lot of dinners together. I enjoyed working with my mom. If I had a big event, I would ask her to come over and help me, and we would cook things to, together. A lot of times she would cook the meal, and then she would pay for all the supplies. Well, she would pay for all the supplies and cook the meal, and we would try to pay her for it. She would say, no, and you've heard this before if you've been around mom. I can do this. How many of you have heard that when she does something generous? No, I can do this. Over and over. In Landmark Pentecostal Church, it was known as Betty's Spaghetti. She became famous for her spaghetti dinners. And then she would do a lot of the cleanup after. Then she would pick up people. Whenever there was somebody to be picked up, Sister Cleveland will do it. And I'm going to tell you, I think, one reason why she would do it. Go back to my childhood. Sometimes my dad would take us to the church, and he would um, drop us off, my mom and six kids, and he'd say, get your own ride home. So, well, after church... Who are you going to ask to take a mother and six kids home? So mom would never do it. She was independent. So we would just all take off walking in the dark, headed home. It was about a mile from church. But, and this morning when I thought about it, we never made it home because always somebody from the church would pick us up as we were walking home. I think that's why she was always willing to pick people up and to take them to church. I know there were times at the end where she was picking up several of the older ladies and it would be like an hour and a half drive to do all that she was doing, to pick them up. <clears throat> I'm going to 
stop with this. Words that describe mom, faithful, compassionate, generous to a fault, loving to a fault. But the Bible says, Matthew 10, 42, and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a, of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So, Mom, I'd say that in the kingdom of God, you're pretty rich. Happy birthday. And then next is going to be the baby of the family. You can. And I will tell you, when I went to Stockton, they were known, Steve and David, I didn't know their names. They were the babies. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's all I knew. They were the babies. And uh, we're really proud of David. And uh, he teaches in a college, and his wife just got her master's degree as a teacher. We're very proud of her, too. Thank you. I was, I was going to do something from Deuteronomy. But... <laughs> But I decided to write something down instead. From what I remember, my mom became uh, strong when my dad left. She had to work full time and feed, clothe, and take care of six children on her own. She was always there to take care of our needs. She is now almost 90 years old, yet she is still a strong woman who finds a thousand ways to help and show her love. She is the most giving woman I know. She literally has a clothing store in her house <laughs> with all shapes, sizes, and colors of clothing and a few bedroom closets where people can go shopping if they're having a birthday or happen to be around for Christmas. I feel pretty confident that she has single-handedly kept Dillard's from going out of business on many occasions since she buys mountains of clothing at a time. Every Christmas, she buys gifts for all her children, their spouses, grandchildren, their spouses, great-grandchildren, their spouses, along with any guests that may appear, and their spouses. She, she has also been a tremendous help to us in recent years. She takes the kids to school when I work and picks them up from school nearly daily. She often takes them to Chick-fil-A Chick or In-N-Out for some lunch, like just an hour or two after they have eaten lunch at school. She will not order herself anything since she has always just eaten. She'll, <laughs> she'll then bring them home, take out Benjamin's math book, do all of his, his homework herself just so she understands it, and then have him do it, explaining along the way. She says it keeps her mind sharp, and this is partially true, but she never mentions that her son's mind is not so sharp when it comes to math. I think she thinks that sixth grade math could crush me mentally. <laughs> and she might be right. Friday nights. We have had a long-standing tradition of having dinner together every Friday night and then playing dominoes. When Blanca's parents lived with us, when Benjamin was two or three, we would invite her over every Friday for domino night. But when we and she moved to Tucson, somehow Fridays were shifted to her house along with all the cooking duties. So without fail, every Friday we just go to mom's house for dinner and dominoes or scrabble or just to visit. She takes this task seriously. Even though she herself eats less than your average toddler, she always has a big meal, enough food to feed at least 12 more people with salads, the main course, and dessert. And of course she destroys the kitchen in the process. You can always tell when mom's been cooking. There are dirty pans everywhere, salt and pepper cover the stove and countertops. Dishes begin to pile up, and nearly every cupboard door is open. This, she claims, is efficient. She doesn't have to waste time opening and closing cupboard doors. And when dinner is over and the monumental task of cleanup is done, we play a game or visit. If we play Scrabble, she will ask me if such and such is a word knowing full well that it is, and I know she knew it was a word decades before I was born. 
she, she tosses me softballs like this all the time in an effort to shine a light on my limited knowledge of words or, or anything else she thinks I might be good at. And she does this with other people as well. She brags about their accomplishments, tries to get them to perform or show what they know. She calls on people at awkward moments to sing that new song, cite that poem, or tell about their latest accomplishment, even though she never shines a light on herself. However, I remember a few months ago, she invited a young deaf couple to a Friday night dinner. Well, Benjamin and Brandon immediately became interested in sign language and began asking how to say certain words. She taught them, and after the deaf people left, she began talking about sign language enthusiastically. She talked about how challenging it is to translate in church some things because there aren't enough signs to express all that we can express in English and how one has to extract the meaning to get that across. I remember on the way home that night, Blanca said, your mom is really smart. I thought, of course, I passed that on to her. <laughs> anyway, after our Friday night dinners, there's always dessert to have while we are playing a game. I am often too full for dessert, but if I refuse, she is sure to ask me about 85 times if I'm sure I don't want some dessert. I usually decline a few dozen times before I just give in and have some dessert. After the game and dessert, typically the kids will spend the night at Nana's and she'll start the whole process over again and serve them a full breakfast in the morning. She conveniently never has plans on Saturdays, so she'll babysit them for as long as they want to stay while Blanca and I sleep in or go to yard sales. This is a huge help for us. However, during baseball season, Saturdays are planned around games or practices. She has grown to love baseball, or at least loves to watch her grandkids play. Unless there's church, she is there for every practice and game without fail. We used to bring a few snacks to games, but somehow mom has now taken over that duty too. Now she hauls her fold-up chair, a blanket to wrap up in during those Arctic Tucson summer nights, <laughs> and, and a substantial sack full of snacks and Gatorade to keep everyone nourished. During the game, she asks questions like, what's his name, or what happened, or why was that an out? I try to explain, but she doesn't hear that well these days, so I end up yelling so loud they've had to kick me out of several games now. <laughs> She's also the most empathetic person I know. She worries about her kids nonstop and feels your pain even before you know you have any pain. <laughs> Our kids get bumps and bruises regularly, and she is always there to doctor their wounds with aloe vera and a soothing voice. On a few occasions, Benjamin or Brandon may have a bad game and feel dejected. Rather than going to their parents after the game, they head straight to Nana for consoling. She'll put her arms around them and tell them over and over, you did great, I'm proud of you. I know how effective that medicine can be. Her embrace too has consoled me many times in my life, and it does make things better. So mom, let me just say, you too have done great. Thank you for all you did. Next is the other baby, and I think I'll just interject this. I'm closer to Steve Cleveland than I am most of my own siblings. He has become a friend, and we are very good friends today, and uh, he just helped us remodel a whole house in Oregon, and uh, I love this guy. Well, I won't be too long here, since I don't have a big, long list, but I could talk a while about mom. Uh, everybody knows she's such an amazing, kind person. Uh, would give you the shirt off your back, or the shirt from her closet, whichever. And if you haven't got clothing from her yet, you're not a close friend or family member. <laughs> That's for sure. So maybe, if you haven't, raise your hand, she'll get you one. I guarantee you. Guarantee you. <laughs> She's also uh, 
never hungry, like it's been mentioned many times. I know she's starving. I know she is. But because the way she was raised with six kids, or we were raised with six kids and not a lot of money or food, she never would eat till every kid had eaten. And, uh, but she still does it. And we know it's not real. Everybody knows it. Because if you take her to Golden Corral, she can eat like a horse. Absolute horse. So if she ever gives you that, don't listen to it. She's also uh, takes care of me. I'm 59-ish. And uh, still feeds me like I'm 10, you know, because I don't eat the best. She makes sure that I am fed every meal, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, there's one funny story I want to tell. Uh, some years back, she lived about four blocks from us, and she's famous for losing her keys, if most of you know. But this time, she didn't lose her keys. Keys. She locked her keys in the house. She, she went out. I'm hoping she went out the back door. I'm not sure, but she went out. <laughs> she locked her keys in the house. She, she went out. I'm hoping she went out the back door. I'm not sure, but she went out the back. She went out the back in her underclothes. 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 A slip, whatever, but it was, anyway, she had to walk to our house <laughs> down a major street, 32nd Street, so to make it look like she was supposed to be there, she started exercising, <laughs> like she was exercising. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's the only time I ever saw her exercise, actually. <laughs> But she's an amazing woman, and everybody knows that. And uh, I just love you very much, and I believe you're going to make 100, Mom. You know, we're all learning something today. I've never heard that story. <laughs> like to have been there, but... So the last of the siblings that's here is my wife. And uh, we want her to come and say what she wants to say. Somebody the other day said to her that Darcy is her sister. And she was so happy. She had never heard that. It's always she's Darcy's sister. And so she said, I am so in love you so much. I said, you are, you, you just made my day. Because... <laughs> Yes. So I, I've been marking off things off my paper here as all of you spoke. Um, but some of the mom's attributes, uh, as, de as several of you have talked about, she was God-fearing, she was passionate, she's selfless. She's frugal, except giving to others or giving to God's work. Um, hard worker. And she's the best mom ever. And she's my hero. Was and is my hero. So first baby came, Darcy, in the family. And um, Darcy came out with all the talent that my dad had. Probably 90-something percent of it. And the other five of us got to split the rest, divvy it out. <laughs> and um, that, was, that was about how it was, yes. But my mother... She had, she had faith in each one of us, and she was determined to make something out of each of us. And she was probably one of the most determined women I know. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm looking over some stuff. My mom loves the floor. I don't know how many of you have heard this line, <laughs> but it's our favorite line at Christmas time and different times. Uh, all of us try to sit on the floor and we say how we love the floor because that's one of my mom's favorite lines she always wants to make sure everybody has a seat and always uh, she loves the floor even to this day at, at 90 <clears throat> so 
So there were six kids of us, and uh, after a time, about 12 years, um, mom had to carry the job on, on her own. And it was a lot of tough times. Tough times, it was the good, it was the, it was the good and the bad. But mom, mom was tough, and she was strong, and she didn't think about herself. I think she was about 30 when that, that happened. And she, um, she never looked for another. Her children became her goal, and, and that they become what God would want them to be. And uh, I have a saying that I keep thinking about with my mom is, she pushed me. Um, she was determined that I too would, would be able to play an instrument. And she bought me an accordion and made me take lessons. And many, many times she would make me practice and sometimes it was with a belt because I wanted nothing to do with it. I didn't want to be compared to my sister and, you know, and I just wasn't going to do it. But I do remember the day when my teacher gave me a book and it was called Rock and Roll. <laughs> I can play those songs today and still enjoy them. And two of them, I remember, they just, and I, I, I fell in love with playing. When I started learning some of them, they were so fun. And they were uh, cool beats. And uh, so that turned me on, and I started liking music and decided that maybe I would try. She made me play in the orchestra at church. Um, she would push me. She would push me to be my best. I wasn't too interested. I wasn't too happy with myself, but she pushed me. She pushed me to look nice. She pushed me to um, do what I didn't want to do, which was a lot of things. But she was such a force in my life because she was passionate. She was passionate about it. She lived her faith before us all the way. Um, you couldn't help but love her. I remember many, many times as a, a young girl going to bed, and my mother would always pray with us before we went to bed. And she then, sometimes she would go to the piano after we were in bed, and she would play and sing. And one of those songs we sang tonight was, Oh, How I Love You. And it would just, it would grab me. And she was such a force in um, putting the love of God in my heart. Um, another song was, um, another song where she would sing, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted. She was just a force. I watched her through the tough times. She became, she bettered herself. She, while she made sure we were uh, in a Christian school, she um, worked, I don't know how she did it, but she also took on college, and, and she got an AA from Delta College. Then she went on, and she took some classes, and she got a BA from one of our prestigious colleges there in the UOP. And then she went on to teach in many colleges, several colleges. She would teach sign language, um, and she began to do better, you know. She could make better money because she bettered herself along with all of that. She was such a hard worker, and she, she inspired me every step of the way. I got sick of, I got married, I got sick a few years ago, about four years ago, and um, uh, I got put in the hospital. I was, I was very, very sick. Uh, and it was uh, acute, acute pan pancreatitis. And so uh, I, I ended up in the hospital for 11 days, and I was so sick. Um, I just didn't know if I was going to make it. It was, it was, I was so sick. And my mom would call me often, and I remember the day when she said, Georgia, you got to push yourself. you got, you got to want to get better. She, she would, I, this, this pushing me all through life. <laughs> She's been behind me, pushing me. You gotta wanna live, Georgia. You gotta do this. And so it was time to get out of the hospital and I was still extremely, extremely sick. And my husband told me, he said, your mama's coming 
to take care of you. My mom's 86 at that time. I said, my 86-year-old mother is coming to take care of me. I thought, how? She came. She came on the day I got out. That day she was there. And for about three days, I was so sick, I could hardly eat a bite. I could, I was, I was very sick. But she immediately got to cooking. And on the third day, and she would push me, take another bite, take a bite, please take a bite. You know, drink this, bring me this, you know. But the third day, I woke up to the smell of the most delicious soup, um, vegetables, and mainly vegetables and stuff. And for the first time, food smelled good to me. And she nursed me back to health. I don't know, was she two months? She was there a long time. She totally nursed me back to health. I would have had to have Burger King hamburgers, french fries. <laughs> I probably would not have made it. <laughs> but at 86, she still had the strength. And at 90, she's still kicking. She's still driving all over the place. Um, she is a go-getter. And I think I'm going to probably go before she does. But if, if I do, say something nice. <laughs> anyway, I love her, and she is, she is an amazing lady. There's no one like her. Thank you, Mom, for pushing me. I love you. Mom has asked for one lady to speak, and so we're asking Connie and Janet to come. If they could come quickly. This is a long-time friend of Mom's, and I think Janet will sign, and Connie will interpret, I think. I just wanted to say happy birthday. I'm so honored to come be with you. I miss you from being in Scottsdale. Thank you for the many years that you've been faithful with my two children and you would drag us to church and you would drag my kids to church. You would make sure the kids would be at church, but that they were faithful. And then I started seeing that faithfulness and I became a part of the church. And my kids are, my, my daughter's here now. And it's because of you that you drew us through love, through some hard times, through my divorce, and I've lost my son. But you, you helped me be faithful because of your advice, your counseling, such a good example that I have seen in your life. You've interpreted for me for years, and through your interpreting, I remember the first time I saw you interpreting when there was a bunch of deaf people and you were interpreting for all of us. You were talking about the false eyelashes and the sign that you made for the false eyelashes, I will never forget. <laughs> like, what is that? We, we, we deaf, we were just laughing and laughing that you're sign language for that. It may not have been the right way, but that's how grandma signed it. And we just were like laughing. We didn't say anything. It was just funny. It was after church. We were telling her, what was that, what, what was that sign? And she was like, oh, this is the reason why. And, and they, we just all just laughed. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? And so we, we all talked about that. It was so much fun. We loved your interpreting and your faithfulness. And I'm still faithful in church. I just miss you a lot. God bless you. You blessed me. And through that, I love you so much. Can I say something? So I, I am not a blood relative of grandma, but this is grandma for me. And yes, it was because the many times that you took me home with you and you fed me over and over, even when I wasn't hungry. <laughs> but 
there has been many times that you have blessed my life. And to this day, I am an interpreter um, and I ran from this calling for years, from this calling as an interpreter. But the one thing that kept me coming back was grandma because anytime she instilled me a love, I'm, I'm a coda, which is a child of a deaf adult, but I wanted to do something else other than that. But she has such a passion and a love for deaf people. And that was something that you could not teach. It was just, it was an example. And she instilled that in my life. And I have taken on that passion. So thank you, Grandma. All right. I liked Grandma so much when she was at Stockton that I took her class at 7 in the morning, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, I did sit by this cute little redheaded girl each time, but... <laughs> and I today can't do any sign language, pretty much. So, I, I know there's cake and, and dessert coming, but you know what, folks? She's almost 90. Are you okay with hearing these stories? We are. Yeah, we're going to open it up to some grandchildren. And uh, uh, mom has lost one son, John, and Jackie is part of that family. And we've asked her to start it off. And then other grandkids, all we're asking is if you keep it just a minute or two or three, it's got to be quick or we could be here pretty late. Come ahead, Jackie. Drove all the way to Arizona with two kids and another one on the way. Well, let me stand here so Grandma can see me. Uh, happy birthday. I'm not going to look at you because I'm pregnant, and so that means the tears will come quickly. So... Um, I didn't know what to say, but I was thinking about a Sunday night just recently after church we were getting together, and someone asked me about this trip that I was going on and asked me about Grandma, and we talked long, and I started off with one person in front of me, and everyone that was still at the church was listening to the stories and those who knew her and were sharing stories, and so long after... You know, for years, we'll be sharing her stories. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Um, but if we should have played a game, it should have been Grandma Bingo. And if we had done that, these were the things that we were going to mention. Betty's spaghetti. Grandma's tacos. She likes the floor. Lost keys. Her stubbornness. Dillard's clothes, we've heard a couple things about that. Every gift that you ever got from Grandma also came from Grandma Wise. Ryan added this one, very political. <laughs> Never starving in her presence or it's your own fault. And I believe she can still do this, ability to play the piano with her foot. I won't ask her to do that. The matching Christmas gifts, her faithfulness, and her devotion to God. Sorry, my kids aren't used to this. At church, if I'm on the platform, they usually go out screaming. <laughs> I did reach out to Shelly, and she wrote a letter, so I'm going to read that real quick. Um, hi, Betty. Forrest and I would like to wish you a very special happy birthday. You were always a great inspiration to me when I was part of your family. You are selfless. If we could all be the kind of person that you are, this world would be a much better place. We are hoping to come to Arizona in October, and we will be visiting with you for sure. We love you again. Happy birthday, Shelley and Forrest. Janella also sends her love, and I know that the connections Grandma had at the college gave her her job that allowed her to go to college and do a lot of great things. And so she, I'm, I know she's very proud of that and very excited that she had that connection. And if I can say one thing, Grandma, you saved my life. 
No, I'm going to end on one thing before my kids go crazy. She'll never say her grandkids are her favorite. She won't choose one. But I got the trump card. Out of her 29 grandchildren, and the ones, we call them outlaws in the family, so 29. 29 great-grandchildren, two greats on the way, and uh, so many grandkids that she have adopted her. I will always be her slightly favorite because my firstborn is named after her, even if it's a terrible name. Yeah. Okay, grandkids, the floor is open. Shane's going to take the mic. All right. Grandma, happy early birthday. And uh, so many quotes have already been said. And um, I wanted to, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but someone, Jackie, just mentioned that every Christmas gift we got was from Grandma and Grandma Wise. And I remember Grandma Wise. I was a young rascal, and uh, she was trying to teach me a lesson, and so she used an illustration, and all she could find was a leftover Chinese food box and a potato. Food box and said, what do you think I'm going to get when I pull out, when I reach my hand in here? She said, a potato. She's like, exactly right, because I put a potato in. And she was trying to get me to understand the concept of sowing and reaping, and I never forgot that basically because it was a Chinese box and a potato. <laughs> but I know that all the lessons that you taught your children, that they taught us, and we're here because of you. And we love you and we honor you today. All right. Grandma, we love you. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for your life and for the legacy that is here. And it's because of you. Um, my one of my earliest memories with grandma is being at her house overnight, getting up on Saturday mornings. We'd go get donuts, and she'd give me sips of her coffee. And that was the beginning of my love for coffee. I'm sure I was too young to drink coffee, but grandma would share her coffee. Um, Any time in my growing up years that my dad was in the hospital, grandma was always there. Always, always, always. Um, she would come and stay at our house. She would take care of us kids, and I, I just want to tell you that I thank you for that. I appreciate it. Never in, in our grown-up years did it feel like we were ever going to be alone, ever not going to be cared for, and part of that was because of you, because you were always there. When, uh, when I gave my dad a kidney almost 20 years ago, uh, we were both in the hospital and then I was released early and so then we were kind of divided because I needed to go home and dad needed to stay at the hospital. So my mom stayed at the hospital with dad and grandma brought me home and took care of me. I remember she made me cream of broccoli soup and made sure that I ate even though I didn't feel like eating and, and helped to nurse me back to health. And I just, I really appreciate your faithfulness and your selflessness for so many years. Grandma, I just want to say that we love you very much, and uh, everybody's already covered most of everything that I would have said, but uh, one early member I remember uh, of your house, uh, back when you were in Scottsdale, I believe, was we used to go spend the night with you every once in a while, and uh, you used to play 90.3 while we went to sleep. And there used to be a, a program that came on late at night called Night Sounds. <laughs> and it scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> but, yeah, so every night, I don't know if I slept at all, but... <clears throat> But, uh, Grandma, we love you very much, and uh, everybody represented here today is, shows that your greatest joy has been investing in your family, and we appreciate it. We love you. Happy birthday. 
Grandma, we love you. Um, through the years, I, I, like Debbie was mentioning, getting up early Saturdays, thrift, uh, garage sale shopping, you'd have your big cups of sweet tea, and um, you always, you have a lot of grandkids, <laughs> but you always showed so much interest in all of us. I remember late nights as teenagers, you coming in the room and sitting on the bed talking about boys with Debbie and I, and you were always so interested, and um, even though we never lived close, she left right before I was born. And, um, but it's okay, Grandma Wise, Grandma Wise stayed. But, um, but we love you, and everyone's already mentioned your faithfulness, and that has been passed down from, to every generation. And we love you, and we give you honor today. Love you, Grandma, very much. Appreciate you. And um, most everything's been said, so I'll just take a minute. But I remember the garage selling in the morning and the smell of coffee in Grandma's car. And uh, I think I owe my prayer life to Grandma because whenever we went hunting, she was praying for the deer. And so we were high and dry for a number of years, and I realized if I was ever going to kill anything, I was going to have to learn how to pray. But uh, thank the Lord, at some point we turned the tide. <laughs> now, lots been said about your Christian character and your faithfulness and your giving. And uh, all I can say is that um, having five kids and working a job and doing it together with my wife, it's really, really hard. It's really hard. So I admire you very much for the strength that you've through the years that you did that on your own. It's very, very commendable, and we know that you did it with God's help, but you showed all of us that it can be done, and so we, we just want to say thank you for that. Benjamin's trying to think of something to say, and he's been working hard at it, but he says, I'm going to tell it for him. These two boys here, Benjamin and Brandon, love this grandmother. And she loves them. And we thank the Lord for her influence with them too. Amen. All right. Now we're going to do something that's not on the schedule. Is anybody else when I say something really quick? And I'm the timer. I know PJ's hiding. He's, he's shaking over there right now. Oh, Ryan. Well, Grandma Cleveland, um, my wife didn't cry, but I might. But I just want to thank you for everything you put into my wife growing up. And I know everyone here is such a testament, and I appreciate it so much, and I love you dearly. And I'm very proud that our firstborn daughter is named after you, even though it's a horrible name. <laughs> I, I won't let you live that down. But one thing they say when you're talking about kids and raising kids, that if you can uh, keep 10% of your just 10% of your bad traits from transferring to your children, you're a success. Kind of a negative way of thinking about it. But if I can just get 10% of the traits that you have shown to everyone, I will be a success, and I am very appreciative. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm looking at the schedule. Darcy, let's sing a song. Sister Abbott, sorry. Let's sing a song. I need the family and the kids to come join me. Just come join me real quick. We're going to sing. Come. If you're a family member, I know you are. I don't have to be a prophet. I know your names. Come on up if you want to. Come on up, come on up. I think it was. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, ha
was for mom. So we are going to ask the second most favored son-in-law to come. And uh, we want him to say a few words, and then he'll say a closing prayer. But that prayer will only lead us to dessert. Am I correct? Brother PJ, wherever he's at, that will lead us to dessert. Am I correct? So, Brother Abbott. Thank you, Brother Graves. It's wonderful to be at this event, even though it's a little early for celebrating Mom's birthday. But uh, maybe we'll do it again when, it, when the big date comes around. But uh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience to have Betty Cleveland in my life. Um, and the way she got in my life, most of the time I've heard other people telling this story, but I'll tell it this time. I, I started preaching before I got married. And I, I went to Bible school in Stockton. In fact, my old roommate's here today, Brother Gutierrez. We roomed together in school. And, but uh, I started preaching, and I, I would preach in churches around the area out of Stockton there. And uh, several times, I'd be in the service, and the service was just starting. And the door would open, and in come with a mom with a bunch of kids. And it was Betty Cleveland bringing her daughter to see me. <laughs> and uh, I guess it worked. <laughs> but um, that, that put us together. But I, I want to, I think my wife has mentioned this already, but I want to emphasize that when we came to Scottsdale, we came virtually with, with nobody. We had no building, no contacts, no people just felt the call of God to go there. And so we started and we uh, gathered in a few people and did a lot of Bible studies and all of that. And we had people coming and we grew up to about 15 or 20 and then some turn of events or whatever, they'd all leave and we'd be back down to our, me and my four and no more. And uh, at, at that time, Pastor, Pastor Abbott was about two years old at that time. And uh, so we'd build back up and then it'd go back down again. It was just up and down. But in 1983, we started in 1981. In 1983, Sister Cleveland and some of the family moved over uh, from Stockton and moved to Scottsdale. And when Sister Cleveland came and Steve also was a big part of that. But um, we, we finally had somebody we could depend on. We knew there's going to be somebody at church. We knew there's going to be somebody paying their tithes. We, we knew there's going to be support, a feeling of support. And uh, she was, I don't remember the exact years, but somewhere like 27 years while I was pastoring, she was there in our church. She was one of the greatest givers we ever had. And uh, uh, just very faithful and, as my wife has said, supporting every part of the work. And so she certainly deserves this honor today. Uh, her family loves her, her grandkids love her, and uh, great-grandkids, and uh, we, we love her, amen, because she's been so faithful, amen. So we're going to pray. Let's stand together, everybody but me. I want to pray together. We're going to pray God's blessings on, on Sister Betty Cleveland. Amen. She's given to others. Let's give her something in prayer. Pray that God's hand will be upon her. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your touch. We thank you for your blessings and goodness. God, I thank you, Lord, for Betty Cleveland. I thank you, Lord, for her life. God, I pray that you will bless her. I pray that you will touch her, Lord Jesus. I pray that you'll keep your hand of safety upon her, keep her safe on the road, keep her safe, Lord Jesus, on the highways. Lord Jesus, be with her and bless her, Lord. God, may her, the end of her life be the most blessed time. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for her faithfulness. Bless her, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Now let's lift our hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I believe there's a cake. Dave, could you just pull over to cake? There's all kinds of stuff there. Lighting a few candles. I think they've got 90. Maybe not. Again, we want to say thank you to everybody for being here. This has been a marvelous time. PJ says if you're going to do it again, you're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said PJ said it's going to happen. Happy birthday! You got an amazing son, by the way. Happy birthday! 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 All right. DJ, how is it going to work? Can you tell them? They, they can just come get it. All right. They're going to cut the cake and then come. I think I saw brownies. I saw some really pretty cookies over there. I'm sure it's all sugar-free.